When you're going to build your layout in your React Native app, you're going to be using what's called Flexbox to build that layout. And this is a opt-in feature typically on the web, but it's something we get by default. And before we can really dive into it, something we want to cover is differences in the de defaults between the web and React Native, because there are some important differences. You can see those here. Basically, on the web, you need to specify when you're using Flexbox, whereas with React Native, it just happens by default. Uh, the default flex direction is going to be row on the web and column in React Native. Align content on the web is stretch. On React Native, it's flex start. And then finally, flex shrink on the web is one and flex shrink on React Native is zero. So basically, these defaults that you see down here that I've specified, there's no need to specify those beyond just being very clear in your styles. That's what you're going to get for free. So with that said, let's go over a few of the key properties within Flexbox when building a React Native app. Okay, so first thing is the Flex property. And the Flex property determines how much of the view a component actually takes up. So in this case, we've specified Flex 1. And because there's only one thing that specifies a Flex, there's only one segment we need to factor in. So 1 out of 1 is 100%. Now, if we go ahead and add another view that also has a Flex property on it, Let's just go ahead and copy this one and we'll give it a different background color so we can see the difference. You can see we've got two segments, one plus one is going to equal two, and each one of these segments is going to take up one half of the screen. Now, if I bump up the flex property of this blue segment to a three, that's going to give us basically four units we need to factor in. And then we can use that flex to determine three out of four, it's three quarters. So it's going to dynamically update that and then flex one will take up one quarter of that. So we can kind of build dynamic layouts by using the flex property. Okay, and now moving forward, I've added a bit of code here. Basically, it's just four squares that are being rendered. And the big thing here, we've got our flex direction is, is the property we're actually talking about, and that determines the direction the children should render. If we remember back to the default, we know our default is going to be a flex directional column, which means they're going to be rendered vertically in a column, as we can see here. Now, ignore the align items and justify content. We'll get to that in a moment. But with flex direction, if we want to change it from rendering in a column to in a horizontal row, all we need to go do is go ahead and switch that over. And it'll go ahead and update the direction our items within this container are actually being rendered. Alternatively, and this is hard to visualize because each one of these squares is exactly the same. Uh, actually, here, let's go ahead add another background color of red to one of these. So we can see we've got our three squares in a row here. We can actually go ahead and specify the flex direction of row reverse, and that'll go ahead and render those in the opposite direction. So you got a handful of different options on how you want to render things using the flex direction property. Okay, next thing we have is justify content. We've got the same example, just changing up our styles for our container a little bit here. Now, justify content is going to determine the content along the primary axis where that's aligned. So the primary axis, axis is determined by the flex direction. So right now we've got justify content center along the flex direction of column, which means it's going to be centered vertically. If I were to change the flex direction to row, we're going to see it's horizontally centered. So justify content works around that primary axis, which is determined by flex direction. Now we've got different options. So we've got center here. Let's go ahead and save this back to flex direction. You could also set this to space around, which is going to maximize space around each element. So between the elements and their boundaries, or we could maximize the space between the elements. If I type that right. So you can see we're bumped all the way up to the top and bottom, but we've got as much space between the elements as we possibly can. Alternatively, you could set it to flex start, which is the default. That's going to put everything at the top or flex end, which will put everything down at the bottom. Okay, next let's go ahead and take a look at align items and align items determines how an item should be rendered along the secondary axis. And that is also determined by the flex direction. So say you want to vertically and horizontally center something, you're going to use justify content and align items in combination because one justify content works along the primary axis and one works around the secondary axis. So just like flex 
or justify content, we've got the same properties for our line items. We could say flex end, and we can say that's going to put those over to the right. We could say flex start, that's going to put it to the left again along the secondary axis. So if I go ahead and switch our flex direction and set this to row, you can see it's going to flip it. Align items is now affecting our vertical, our column, whereas justify content is affecting our flex direction of row. So we've got it centered horizontally and it started at the top here. So it can get a little tricky, uh, but basically if you want to horizontally and vertically center something, you're going to need to use this justify content and align items. Okay, so we've determined we've got justify content and align items. Those are going to center things for us. What if we want to affect just a single element? Well, we could go ahead and use the align self property, which rather than being on the container is going to be on an individual element to determine where it should be laid out. So if I go ahead and use an array here, of an array of styles, I can go ahead and add an align self. These are going to take the same properties as align items. We could say we want by default everything to be centered, but we want the second element, I want this to be at the flex start. So you can see that that's going to override our align items and bump that content to the left. Likewise, I could go ahead and add align self of flex end to the last element, and that'll bump it over to the right. Okay, so that was a lot of talk about individual properties on their own. What about actually building a layout with Flexbox? Well, let's go ahead and build this basic grid using Flexbox. So if we take a look at this, we can see we've got nine squares, each one having a letter inside of it. So I'm going to create a square component to render these. And that's going to take a text prop in which we'll go ahead and render a view and we'll put text in there with our actual text content. So now I can render my nine squares. We've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Is that all of them? No, we need H and I. Okay, so we've got all of our squares. Well, we've got the components. So we've got these defined. Let's go ahead and actually add styles to our square now. So we need to add a style property to our view. I'm going to say styles.square. Then our square is going to have a width of 100, height of 100. I'm going to give it a border width of 1, border color of white. And then we want to justify the content inside of there to be vertically and horizontally centered so that our text is centered. Okay, so we're seeing all of these. Uh, let's go ahead and add a style in here as well and say the color of the text is going to be white as well. Okay, so we can see this is, we've got all of our squares rendering, but it's not in a grid. Well, first thing we know is we need to break our view, our column into multiple rows. So let's go ahead and break these into sections of three. We'll just go ahead and wrap those ABC in a view. Let's add a style equal to styles.row here. And we can do the same around DEF and GHI as well. Now let's add styles to our row. And if we remember, we can specify our flex direction, which will change the default from column to row. And then we've got things set up in our rows. And with just a few properties, we've gone ahead and determined, okay, we've got a container. We want all of our items to be vertically and horizontally centered by using align items and justify content center. We also specified our container should take up the whole view by using a flex one. Then we've gone ahead and specified with our rows that we have elements in, and inside of those rows, they should be rendered horizontally using flex direction row. And then finally within our squares, once again, we used justify content center and align items center to vertically and horizontally the text inside of it. And that's a quick intro to using different Flexbox properties. These, there's a lot more Flexbox properties, and I'll have a link to the Flexbox docs from React Native on more that you can do with them. But really, this is going to cover 80% of your layout needs using Flexbox.